Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. This week I'm very pleased to announce that I have finished part three of my Niagara course. Uh, this is looking at simulation stages uh, and some of the more advanced things you can do in Niagara. So, start with for loops. Uh, just a quick overview of what for loops are and how they work here with a quick blueprint. Then we look at how we can do that same thing in Niagara, uh, referring back to particles either in a different emitter or, or in the same emitter and looping over them to kind of get information from them. With that, we then build this effect, uh, which is using the kind of little orb particles to distort the um, skeletal mesh reproduction particles on the animated character. Uh, and then finally, we have a look at these hanging chains. So doing a iterative simulation, uh, an iterative constraint simulation to do a kind of physics-y uh, result. Um, and you can see it updating as we move this around, which is pretty cool. Then we run to a grid 2D, uh, and we'll talk about what grid 2D is, how it works, uh, what kind of data structures it uses, um, how can we work with the data once it's in a grid, um, doing simple dissolves or possibly um, moving things around, um, and then how can we then take that and export it out uh, and make that render uh, in our materials. With the basics, uh, we'll then dive deeper into what we can do with grid 2D. Um, and so here I have built uh, Conway's Game of Life using uh, Grid 2D in Niagara, um, a cellular automata. And so if you don't know Conway's Game of Life, highly recommend going and checking that out. There's a wealth of information about that really interesting mathematical problem uh, or rule set um, that we can use and we can recreate these um, really interesting patterns. That's going to lead us on to some more uh, techniques we can use. So slowing down the uh, simulation to make it a bit easier to see what's happening, uh, using textures as inputs, um, all sorts of fun stuff with Grid 2D. I'm going to have a look at reaction diffusion simulations. Uh, this is a similar kind of approach, uh, a mathematical equation that takes in various uh, various data um, and creates these sort of um, natural, naturally occurring patterns. So this is the type of pattern you get when you have two chemicals uh, interacting with each other, which you find quite often in things like animal skin. Um, and as a simulation we can do in, in Niagara. Um, so again, building on that grid 2D type, um, type workflow. And then finally, uh, we're gonna do some falling sand simulations as well. So uh, just a quick default falling sand doesn't have the right kind of physics when it hits the ground. Well, well how can we fix that? Well, we'll fall off to the side, uh, then we can replace that with textures. And then finally, come in and fix the um, the banding that you get. Uh, so lots of cool Grid 2D stuff in there. Then I'm gonna move on to even more Grid 2D things. Um, rewindable particles. Here we have a particles writing to a Grid 2D and then reading back from the Grid 2D. And so we can get an effect that can be completely rewound or looped perfectly, which is kind of cool. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the uh, other ways we can input data into our grids uh, and then use that uh, to do loops. So here, looping through the particle, each particle is writing a spherical shape to the uh, to the grid. And you can see we're getting these kind of, um, sort of drops happening, which is pretty cool. And then finally doing the same thing, but with textures. And so here, texture stamping per particle into a grid. Uh, and there's all sorts of really cool, powerful things we can do with that technique as well. Finally, we're gonna have a look at neighbor grids. Um, Neighbor grids are a way of optimizing loops effectively. Uh, they're a way of dividing up the space into smaller se sections. Uh, and so when we do um, our calculations, we don't have to consider every particle in a loop. We can just consider the ones that are nearby. Um, and we'll be doing a lot of reverse engineering with this. So these are from the content example um, pack. It comes, uh, it's available sort of on the marketplace from Epic. Um, and we're gonna be using the HLSL there and kind of reverse engineering it as well. So going through a little bit of HLSL, not writing our own, but sort of debugging and um, working with what they've provided uh, as a way of, of building up these effects. So um, <clears throat> talking about what a neighbor grid is, talking about how it works, talking about how to um, reverse engineer someone else's effects when we do get access to, uh, to effects that we don't quite understand, uh, and then how we can build these up. So um, some examples here of things either working or not working, um, some debug tools that we'll make, uh, and then the final uh, result where it's taking the color from the big particles uh, and then spreading that out to the uh, to the smaller particles. Uh, we'll have a look at this effect, 
uh, which is propagating color um, throughout multiple grid cells. Uh, this is just going to be a purely HSL example. Uh, and then we're going to start looking at some position-based dynamics, so uh, interparticle collisions, or at least a fake approximation to interparticle collisions. Uh, and so using the position of the particles and our loops and our neighbor grids to do some sort of approximation um, to, to sort of physics type reactions um, and a few things with that. So uh, deriving the algorithm, converting it to work with the grid, uh, and then looking at, uh, at some other examples as well. It's lots of content. It's about 11 and a half hours, I think, of video, uh, as well as all of the um, example files you get that you see here. Uh, it's available right now on Gumroad. Uh, it's available as a sort of uh, its own thing, so you can just buy part three uh, if you're if you're uh, already quite advanced with Niagara, or you've already got parts one or two. If you've been holding out, uh, I've also put up a bundle so you can buy all three parts together. Um, this goes from the real introduction: what is Niagara? How does it work? What is a particle? Uh, all the way through to advanced sampling, and then all of the simulation stages we've just seen. Um, so a full course um, from from very beginning to really really quite advanced Niagara stuff uh, and then finally I've done a full bundle uh, all four materials courses and all three Niagara courses so you can pick up all seven of the long form courses it's about 50 something hours of video um, so that's there as well uh, also note there will be some more courses coming soon I'm going to do something on blueprints, maybe something on lighting. Not sure exactly when, but when they do come, they are going to be added to this bundle. Um, so if you pick it up now, you'll get access to those when they come out as well. Um, as always, big thanks to everyone to on Patreon who supports the channel uh, and everyone who has bought any of these asset packs and tutorials so far. Um, if you have any problems or questions, please do reach out. Um, and I hope you'll enjoy learning about Niagara as much as I enjoyed making these. So um, until the next time, um, yeah, enjoy your effects work and I'll see you all next time.